right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to write um, or automate a newsletter with Coda and only Coda. So we're going to need two main tables and two main tables only. The first is newsletters. And let's suppose that we're going to do a 50 series newsletter. So eventually anyone who signs up is going to receive all 50 pre-written newsletters. First, we're going to create our table. We'll call it DB newsletters. It's always important to name your tables well so you can find them later. And we'll call it round. Um, which will be a number, the round, or, or is it the first newsletter, second newsletter, third newsletter. We're going to call this subject. This is the subject line that would be sent with the email. And lastly, we'll do a canvas column type, and we'll call it notes, um, newsletter, actually. So from there, let's say we want 50. One thing you could do is press this 50 times, but uh, we're going to find an easier way to do that. And this will show you, hopefully, for some of the other docs, just a nice trick that helps you save time. Uh, let's create a button. And what we're going to do is we're going to define how many rows we want. We want 50 rows, and we currently have three already, so we need 47 more. So I'm going to create a list of 47 items, number one to 47. Then I'm going to use a uh, formula called formula map. All that's doing is essentially saying, hey, Coda, I'm going to give you a list, and can you run a distinct action on each piece in that list? And so the action I'm going to add is add row. I'm going to add it to DB Newsletters. So let's click that, and we'll get 50 rows exactly. So now that we have that, we don't need to add any more. Uh, there's a couple ways that we could then number these, right? We could number them manually. That's not fun, though, because we want to automate everything we do. Second, uh, some people I see a lot trying to number things by row ID. Row ID is not a good way to do this, and I'll tell you why. Um, let's say that you delete one of these. And you go, shoot, I deleted one, I'm going to add one, right? It's 51 still, even though there's still 50 rows, because now I'm skipping the one that I added, 25, 26. So this will always create one unique number, and it will never recreate that number. So a better way to create row numbers for yourself is to say this table dot find this row. That will always give you 1 through 50 exactly. Uh, now you're going to define your subject. So we're going to choose our subjects for each Newsletter, I'm just going to say welcome to the newsletter as the first one. Of course, you can put whatever you'd like. And then next, I'm going to put um, welcome to day two. All right, we'll write our newsletters later, but let's go set up our people table. So in DB people, we've got uh, nothing so far, but we're going to add a table. And that table is going to have name, uh, email, because we need to send them an email. It's going to have one called target. Uh, nope, it's going to have one called round, just finding like, are they getting the first newsletter, the second, what round are they on, what newsletter should they get? Uh, target newsletter, and then I'll show you how to do some more after that, but first let's give them some names and some emails. Um, we've got Luke, Darth, Baby Yoda, and Mando. Uh, now we're going to define what round they're on, and let's say that you have a situation where individuals sign up for your newsletter, you know, halfway through their round. I'm going to give you a way so that you can start individuals in a newsletter at the first time every time. And so what we're going to do with that is call this a number. And then we're going to choose that new rows get the value of one. So anytime someone comes, let's say all these guys are on three, right? They're already getting the third newsletter, but someone's heard of what you're doing and they want a new one. And so they get added, maybe that's manually or automatically, they're going to always get added to start at number one. So let's set these all back to one. Uh, target newsletter, we're gonna change this bet to a text, and we're gonna define what newsletter they should be on based on their number. How we're gonna do that is the filter formula. So we're gonna say DB newsletters.filter. What filter's doing is just saying, hey, go look into my newsletters, and I want you to find a certain row. The row I want you to find in newsletters is the one where round is equal to this row dot round. Right? So there we go, and we'll unwrap that with first. Um, normally, filters return a list of values, even if it's only one. We just want the first one, because it should only match one. So that's going to give us this little one in a chip. Notice if I change this to seven, that would give me the seventh newsletter. Two, that would give me the second newsletter. What this is here is an object chip, and inside this object chip is every value within the newsletter. So in newsletter, there is round, subject, and newsletter. Now inside this chip, there is round subject in newsletter. We're going to pull those out so we can use them later. I'm going to call this target subject, and I'm going to call this uh, target 
body, the body of the newsletter we're going to be sending. I'm going to draw that information out of this chip like so. I'm going to press equals and then I'm going to say target newsletter dot dots how we draw out that information and subject. Welcome to the newsletter. Welcome to day two. Notice if I change it to three, it changes to nothing because I haven't defined that yet. Target body is just going to be target newsletter dot newsletter. It's blank because we haven't written a newsletter yet. Okay, so what we need next is just to write in some blank newsletter text. We can go in here, and as you're writing your newsletter, first I'm going to just edit this. I just don't like how it looks. Um, I like this a little better. There we go. And maybe you're going to start with one. You're going to say, welcome. And then you're going to say, this is our newsletter. And then maybe you even want a photo in there. You want a really cool photo of DB newsletters. It's just the easiest photo I can grab. All right, so I'm just showing you that you can write anything you want in here. You can center stuff, you can change its color, whatever you'd like to do, you can kind of put it in here as far as your newsletter. Uh, you're also gonna be able to individualize each newsletter to each person. So let's do that here. Um, and we're gonna do it with a bracketed argument. So hey, one, comma, this is our newsletter. And in here, we'll say, hey, one, Welcome to day two. You made it. All right, so there's our two newsletters so far. Now we're gonna go in here, and right now their target body is unformatted. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna format that body. How we're gonna do that is we are going to format. Format takes a template and it inputs specific information in it. The template that I want is target newsletter.body. Uh, dot newsletter yeah there we go and now I get to define text this is text what am I going to insert at the first bracketed number I'm going to insert the name so now each body says hey Luke Skywalker hey Darth Vader hey baby Yoda hey Mando I'm individualizing these newsletters per recipient I can also kind of draw out their first names by different um, formulas and so I could say name dot split at the space and take the first value. So essentially, hey, make a list out of the name column um, based off of every blank space. Then give me just the first value, right? So if I wanted to input the first name, I could just input the first name there. Uh, there's a bit more scalable way to find first names and I'll kind of post that link later where you can find that. But let's call it, title that first name and now let's hide it. All right, next up, we can hide these pieces. If we just want to keep round, we could come back to them later. But now we need a couple buttons. We need a button called an incrementer, which is going to you know, move them up around each and every day. And we also need a button called email. And I'm going to make one called email results. Um, e send email. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this a button. And before I do that, though, I'm going to install the Gmail pack. I use Gmail. You could also do this with Outlook, but I'm going to do that by typing in Gmail packs, sign in, mine, sign, only you. We're good to go. All right, now I have all of Gmail's actions available to me. So I'm going to go to button options, select option, not push buttons, packs, Gmail, send email. Uh, sending to equals uh, email. So that's going to send to this current row's email. The subject is going to be, we already defined it, target subject. Also, how I'm opening these up, right now I can just type in static content. If you don't want static content, if you want to define um, dynamic content, you're going to press the equal button. So equals to target newsletter target body. Boom. There we go. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a results column. This will just confirm for me whether or not something has been sent. So you can kind of keep track of like, was it successful or was it not? And I'm going to add more. I'm going to hide signature because I don't want some sort of, uh, this was sent from a Coda doc thing for you. So there we go. I have my email button set up. Uh, send email. And then what we're going to do is make an incrementer. And what it's going to do is move up the round so they never get the same email again. They're always getting a new newsletter. And that is going to be also a button. It's going to modify rows, select table, this row, uh, round, 
is equal to, so I press equals to open up the formula. I want the current value of the round, which is one. I'm gonna add one to it. So notice that will just count up each time. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that will increment their newsletters. Lastly, we're gonna need a matter of automating these and that will be through our automations. So automations, and you're gonna say, maybe just send email. Um, I'm gonna do it time-based, so maybe just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Nope, maybe just those. You only want your things to be sent on weekdays, not the weekends. Let's say I want it sent at 7 a.m. so it gets to their email inbox. I'm gonna push buttons. The button I'm gonna push is send email. Uh, this currently will not send actually because it is taking actions as automation bot and automation bot doesn't have privileges to send emails as you. So essentially you have to come down here and say take actions as yourself. From there, uh, you would turn it on. And then next you would, I would just do this to ensure, it just makes me feel better. Um, I'm gonna do it the hour afterwards. So an hour later at 7 a.m., I am going to push buttons and the buttons I'm gonna push is incrementer. So each day, um, I'll call this move forward round. All right, so each day at 6 a.m., it's gonna press this send email button. Everyone gets their newsletter. 7 a.m., it's gonna increment the round up. And then the next day, they'll get their new newsletter item. So that is the basics and the foundational structure of how you would set a uh, automated newsletter for Coda. I'll share the templates of this at the end. Thanks, guys.